Hi, so in this video, I'll cover how to understand code bases effectively and quickly. So when do you need to understand code base? So there are multiple scenarios. For example, if you are new to a team, uh, then you need to understand what components to use, what to build upon. There could be cases that you want to uh, build some startup or project, side projects, and you want to understand how it has been implemented in other projects, open source and other. And third is even if you are a senior developer or within the team, you might want to work or you need to work on certain different component of the code base that you have not visited before. So in all of these cases, we have to understand code base really quickly. And uh, it's always a challenge because just reading the code line by line, uh, going through each does not help. It can take a lot of time. Uh, so what you need is uh, to read with certain intention uh, that what is the entry point, what is the file structure, and these are the some strategies that we'll cover. Now we'll cover five tips uh, that how what can help you uh, understand code base. But two things that uh, always works if you have uh, you have access to it. The first one is that if there is already good documentation, design docs, videos in your team, then uh, that's uh, lucky for you. That is the best place to start understanding the code. And second is if some senior developer or someone who has written code on that code base for a long time can uh, give you a hand, like uh, spend 15, 20 minutes with you, um, that would be really useful. But often you want to be prepared and do your legwork before going to the team. So these are the two that stands out, but I will cover five things that if you are on your own understanding code base, what you can do. So five things that I'll cover. The first one is to understand the business context. I think we all um, even uh, need a bigger picture that what is this code base about? What is the business problem you're trying to solve? And a good place, like if you are an open source and other, is to go through the readme to understand. For example, this repo is in front of me, which is an auto review AI. And if I go through the whole idea here is to use LLM to generate performance reviews. Um, and these are the features. So this is a really good place to start that, okay, th these are the features. So what likely is the entry point? Uh, how are these features implemented? And if you had to implement on your own that how do you go about making the design choice? Says that provides some clarity. Uh, I can take another example. For example, this slot uh, CLI. Uh, so if I look at this is CLI that scan repositories for IAM permission. So it seems that it will scan the code base in different languages um, and has to understand what permission it needs. So it needs some understanding of uh, different languages, some uh, language parsing algorithm like tree sitter and all it might be using. And that might be located in the scan dot uh, folder. Um, so I will read with that intention, like first understand what is the business problem this code base is trying to solve. And uh, from there on, try to understand which packages or you know, files should I look at. So that's the tip number one, I'll start there. Tip number two uh, is that find the entry point, uh, like the, find the files and folder structure in fact first. For example, if it's a Python uh, repository, which is this, um, and then generally, if you go to backend here, um, there will be fast API. So this is the main uh, sort of entry point for this fast API application where app is there. Likely it should, should have been named main.py, which is not here, uh, but I will start here and then look at uh, supporting function. Uh, if I take, uh, for example, this another uh, open source large repo, Codium PR agent. Um, so it's PR agent, so likely it's named here as PR agent should be the main folder. Uh, and if I look here, and then cli.py, this might be a wrapper and all of the things. So this could also be a good place to start. Uh, then the agent uh, here's uh, PR agent, for example, is uh, would likely be the entry point file and it runs all of these commands for certain cases. So then I will try to uh, go for uh, this PR agent class and try to understand where each of these uh, tools uh, might be defined, which is this PR add docs, PR code suggestion, config.py, whatever was imported. So uh, the main class, uh, you start just by following the name convention. Uh, if I take, for example, this uh, Java TypeScript uh, project, then again, the source could be the main place here. Uh, and then index.ts likely is the entry point. And from there, I'll start, okay, it's uh, importing command from here. Um, it has utils folder. So those might have uh, interesting things like scanning is completely uh, here. Um, language dot extension, which we earlier spoke about, maybe it's, it's scanning different languages and it needs uh, for each languages uh, certain uh, ways that it can parse the repo. Uh, so, uh, that's the second thing that uh, try to understand like which is the primary language of the repo and for each language there is some convention like it's python then it's main.py or app.py from there it's c++ then main.cpp and other and similarly for javascript so that could be a good entry point that start from these files and then go that what makes these files work and go from there the third uh, helpful thing uh, is to look at the commit timeline so for example uh, this is a sloth repository and so i will go here and see the commit timeline uh, so I know that, okay, this uh, GCP permission fix was there. So maybe a good place could be to find a sort of chunky uh, commit that is not pretty large, but sort of 200, 300 lines that I can go end to end and understand how it works. So for example, this uh, uh, GCP support uh, thing is pretty uh, nice that it has a lot of changes, uh, but it uh, implements a full feature, which is GCP support in this code base. So I'll try to understand that what it's doing uh, and uh, which all cha file changes it ha need to do in order to do that. For example, scan come file was changed. So basically this is the place where a scan uh, logic is maintained. Then there are uh, 
this is sort of a wrapper file on that of that uh, on the scan and maybe read directory is what's supporting it um, and then what sort of folder file cli readme uh, that i need to change so uh, this could be another uh, entry point for you that try to uh, go for each of the code base and see that which are all the commits and which one could be helpful now here the initial commit had a lot of bunch of things uh, so maybe uh, this is a pretty large commit uh, but again a good pl uh, place to start to understand uh, what was the first commit uh, in the code base uh, so that's the tip number three uh, that find the uh, one sort of interesting commit and another way to look at it is, is find the pr uh, that can help you uh, do the same for example i will go to the pull request uh, a closed one and see uh, one pull request uh, uh, that help for example this ui uh, feed uh, that uh, implemented the ui features uh, so i will go through all the changes in the ui and try to understand uh, similarly for the sloth case uh, let me see in the pull request this is for azure support uh, but this was uh, adding a GCP custom role. Uh, so it made changes to three files. So let's say I have to change the custom role for Azure. Uh, so I just have to replicate something how it was done for GCP. So this can be a good starting point again for me to understand the code base. Uh, tip number four that I have for you is to understand critical files. And this can be a bit hard to do. Uh, like uh, you could download the repo and uh, use certain libraries to map the connection between that or can use something like um, pandas and all to point out which file is connected a lot with other files. Uh, for example, if we go here in the source case, uh, I would assume that command or scan.ts would be linked with a lot of files because uh, we saw a couple of files and it was all linked there. So what I need to find is which is the sort of core file that is referenced a lot and maybe that is the place to understand uh, because if something is linked a lot and mentioned a lot, it might be more important to the business than the file which was once written and not referenced at all. So that's the tip number four is finding sort of uh, files which are more critical and uh, the way to find is that uh, file which are linked a lot. And the last tip that I have for you is to make a small commit. Uh, so uh, the best way to learn is to learn by doing. Uh, so make uh, find certain bugs or issues. For example, in this case, uh, uh, for sloth there is a repo that adds support there is an issue that adds support for azure so this might be a good place to start that pick up an issue that uh, is there uh, sometimes some repository is also marked good first to use uh, uh, first to do uh, issues so that could be a good place to start uh, i don't see much here in this case uh, in the pr agent uh, answered and all but uh, sim in general in the large cases like if i go to kubernetes and all uh, there will be first to use marked uh, issues so that could again be a good place for you to start now, as a bonus, uh, there is also one way that uh, uh, one tool that can help you understand the code base, and that's what we have been working for some time in ArcGIS. So ArcGIS does uh, we take the same sort of principle that I've walked you through and tries to automate a bunch of it. Uh, so you go to our website here and we offer free uh, one uh, couple of repos uh, which are smaller than 20 MB. If you have a larger repo, feel free to email me. I can allow list for you to sign up. So for example, this is the repo and I can uh, I pick from a trending repos also here uh, that are free to all the users. And I can go to this always debugger on debugger, for example. And the first thing that we do is to provide a summary. An idea here is that we it's an agentic workflow where we do a bunch of LLM calls to figure out uh, what are the critical part of the code base is, what feature and business value it, uh, plans it offers and how it has been implemented. So in the case of uh, this, these are the 10 features. And for some of the features, we go deeper that how is this feature implemented and what are the code uh, changes uh, or sort of code logic that has helped implement this feature. So, the, uh, so that's the first uh, uh, thing that we do, which is provide you a good summary uh, to get started. I'll need to move this here. And um, the second uh, step here is we give you a nice file structure. So uh, I walked you through that understanding file is really important for you to uh, understand what it's trying to do. In this case, uh, it also mapped because of a smaller repo, like what are the functions defined within each file repo and what is these function doing? Like this is the project documentation. This is the main debugger script. Um, this is the example JavaScript file here, a requirement.txt, wrapper. And it also gives you that where uh, some sort of high level overview that okay what's debugger pi is about so it's contained the core logic of the, this debugger um, what's terminal.py is doing and i can go similarly for example other repos so i will take semgrep for example which is a larger repo so these are the top features here what this semgrep is about and for example it does a lot of static code analysis uh, so uh, it says that it's using tree sitter uh, uh, to do that and how exactly it is implemented so this could be a good place for you to start that what is the sort of repo uh, summary uh, and business context once you have that, uh, the file structure uh, that we already uh, walked uh, you through, 
the third thing is that I walked, uh, told you about was the commit history that finding which commit are uh, interesting and helpful. So that you can do by clicking this commit history and gives you that which all commits and what were the sizes of these lines of change. So you can pick the commit which is sort of a reasonable 200 or so size and that could be a good place for you to start. The commits which are pretty large or may not be the first place and it also provides you some nice description for you to uh, sort of go deeper in that direction. So that's the commit history. Then we also generate the file heat map. Uh, maybe I'll pick a larger repo for this one. Uh, so I'll go and pick uh, the semgrep one. So sloth one is also good. So sloth, uh, for example, this is the heat map. And so you could see that which uh, files are being changed a lot is uh, source version TS, which is likely, and then scan or ts which is uh, again changing a lot um, so that those files might be critical files uh, and have uh, important business logic and for each of the files it also uh, ex explains to you that what are the things it's trying to do it also gives a nice diagram that what are the functions and files sort of talking to each other within uh, that particular file and finally the last thing is the file linkage graph so what it gives you is, is that which file is linked a lot and again the file which are linked more uh, is more critical to the code base um, so you can just start for example in your utils.color or scanner.scanner.ts to understand the code base so the goal of RGI here is that uh, to uh, make it easier for you to understand code base and automate some of the techniques uh, that I uh, walked you through so uh, let me know if your feedback uh, on this and uh, in the comment uh, happy to answer any questions there thank you so much